Hi, so right now we're going to start dividing rational numbers, but we're going to review our division rules. And so they're the same rules as multiplication, only it's a quotient. Remember, quotient is the answer to division. And so the quotient of two numbers with the same sign is always going to be positive. And the quotient of two numbers with different signs is always going to be negative. And remember, quotients with zero, zero's weird. So remember this, zero on top or first. is okay. You get a zero, but zero on bottom or second is no way. It just does not work. So, if zero is first being divided, you get zero. If zero is second, you don't get it. It's undefined. It doesn't work. Or if in a fraction form, zero is on top, okay. But if zero is on bottom of the fraction, no way. Alrighty, so we're going to apply that to rational numbers. Now, rational numbers, remember, are fractions and decimals. Could be integers as well. And so... The thing about working with dividing with those, it doesn't work really well if you are trying to divide. If you've got x and you're dividing by y, I know that sounds weird, x divided by y is like one number divided by another number, we can say that that's the same as multiplying by a fraction of that number. So if you remember back in fourth grade, you had something like this, that 4 divided by 2, you're really cutting it in half. So we said that that could be the same as 4 being multiplied by 1 half. And remember that 1 half is the reciprocal. So dividing two numbers is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. That's a really important vocabulary word, reciprocal. Now, if you remember, your teachers may have done stuff like, this is the one you flip over onto its head, or you might have had some other catchy little phrases. But the reciprocal is also known as the multiplicative inverse. And what happens with the multiplicative inverse is, the numerator and denominator change places and we multiply in place of divide. Now that I know is kind of a big thing. So what you might have heard, sound familiar? You might have heard keep, change, flip. So that keep, change, flip is a lot of the stuff that you would have heard in elementary school. Keep the first fraction, change times to divide, and flip your second one over. So keep, change, flip. Really easy to remember. Keep the first one, change it to multiply, flip your second fraction over to its reciprocal. Right? Easy, easy to remember. So when we talk about finding these things, 
This is something that you need to write down. So pause this, write these down, and then fill in as we go along. All right, so to find a reciprocal, I simply flip the fraction over. Now remember, it does need to be a fraction, so if I have something like 7 eighths, I just flip it over to be 8 sevenths. Ah, but if I've got a negative 1, guess what? It stays negative. So if I have negative 5 fourths and I flip it over, it's going to be negative 4 fifths. It just flips over. It doesn't change to the other side of the number line. To divide just fractions, I, here we go with the catchy phrase, okay, I multiply by the reciprocal. I multiply by the reciprocal. That is using your vocabulary. So, Divide a fraction becomes multiply the reciprocal. So 6 sevenths divide by 8 ninths would become 6 sevenths times 9 eighths. And we just talked about that catchy reminder. That catchy reminder is keep, change, and flip. So I kept the first one, I changed divide to times, and I flipped over the second one. That will always, 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 always work. Now, if you've got a fraction and a whole number, remember, I change the whole number to a fraction, and when I change the whole number to a fraction, remember, it's what can you divide by and still keep the same thing, so negative 5 would simply become negative 5 over 1, and then I do the divide becomes times, and I flip that over to 4 thirds. So everything has to be in fraction form because if you're going to multiply them, you've got to multiply numerators, multiply denominators. And if I'm working with mixed numbers, well, they do have a little extra to them. So to divide with mixed numbers, I first change them. to improper fractions. Now when I change them to improper fractions, they still are dividing. So they change up before I ever do my keep, change, and flip. So I first need to change 2 and 4 ninths by multiplying and then by adding. So 9 twos are 18 plus 4 would be 22 ninths. I'm going to keep my divide and then I'm going to do the same thing with 1 and 2 thirds I did there. I'm going to multiply 3 by 1 and add 2 and that would become 5 thirds. Then I do the keep, change it, and flip it over. All right, so these are things that you should have. If you need a moment to write them down, put this on pause. Go ahead, write them down. So we are going to practice some of these. Take a moment, write these down. And when you're ready, unpause. 
So we're back. We're going to do those four division problems with fractions. Remember the catchy little phrase is going to be keep the first fraction, change division to multiplication, and then flip over the second fraction. So keep it, change it, and flip it. At that point, it's solved like you do with yesterday's or day before's when you last look at it, at how do you multiply rational numbers? How do you multiply fractions? And again, you've got variety, so you could just go ahead and say, hey, those multiply, I would get 6, I would get 15, that would make it negative, and then I want to simplify it. So simplifying it, I'm going to get negative 2 fifths because I can divide both of these by 3. So it's like dividing by 3 thirds. Or you could do the canceling. And if you do the canceling on that, negative 3 fifths times two-thirds. You can look at that and say, wait a minute, that three and that three, they're the same number. I can do the simplifying. I'm literally doing that. I divide by three, that becomes one. I divide by three, that becomes one. And when I multiply it, look what I get. One times two, five times one, negative times positive, and I've got a negative. Either way works. Now on the rest of them, where we can cross cancel, I'm going to do that just to make this go a little quicker. But you remember, you can still multiply and then simplify. It doesn't matter. You get the same result. On my next one over here, I have a whole number, actually an integer. I want to fix that. And so what I do is I keep the negative and the 2, but then to change it, I am going to put it over 1. That's what's now being divided by negative 2 thirds. Now I have fraction divided by fraction. I'm going to keep my first one, negative 2 ones. I'm going to change divide to times, and then I'm going to flip that to still stay negative, but three halves. We said you could multiply them, but we're going to do the cross canceling. I have a pair of twos. I'm going to divide each one by two. It's convenient when they're the same number. They always become ones. I'm then going to multiply. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative times negative, ooh, same sign makes it a positive, but it's top heavy. I don't want to leave it at that. So I'm going to simplify it and say 3 divided by 1 is 3. Pretty easy, right? Okay, now this one also has a whole number in it or an integer. Problem with it, it's not in the same spot. It is not in the same spot. So that means that yes, I'm going to keep five sevenths, but when I divide it, my negative three has to become a fraction. And to do that, I am going to put it over 1. Then, because this just doesn't happen, there's no way I can divide 5 by 3, I'm going to do the keep it, change it, and flip it over. Now with this one, Everything I've got here other than 1 is a prime number. There is nothing that they share in common. 
So this one is simply going to be go ahead and multiply it across. When you multiply, five ones are five, seven threes are 21. Positive times negative, different signs make it negative. And because the numerator is smaller, it's not a factor of the denominator, I'm just going to keep my fraction. Ta-da. Okay. Now, mixed numbers. Remember we talked about this on the previous slide. If they're both a mixed number, you've got to get them into their fraction form. So we are going to first start off with fixing those two and changing them. So I multiply and then I add. So 4 times 2 is 8. Add 3 will give me 11. And I keep the 4. It's still going to be divided by. And then I keep the negative. And I change this by multiplying and then adding. Eight ones are eight, add three is 11 eighths. Wow. Now I am going to do my keep change flip. So I keep 11 fourths. I change it to times, and then I'm going to flip it over. So I keep the negative, let's change that to there, and I'm going to change it to 8 elevenths. Now, this is kind of a really awesome one because look, what do you see there? We have a pair of 11s, but we also have 4 and 8, which means I can do a lot of canceling. Woo! How impressive. I can first say, you know, let's go the easy ones, the 11s. 11s are both going to divide by 11 and become 1s. Now, 4 and 8, they both divide by 2, but 4 is also a factor of 8 which means I can divide by four. This will become one, that will become two. And now I just made what could be a really big problem into a really small and easy one. So one times two would be two, one times one would be one, positive and negative, different signs make it negative. And then when I simplify that, that's an easy simplify. I get an integer of negative 2. Yay. So if you remember, they both have to be fractions, and then it changes only the one after the divide. That's the only one that flips. Leave that first one alone. Don't do anything to the first one. And then change it to multiply, because multiply is easy. Everybody knows multiply. All righty? Great. Now, that's not all of our rational numbers. We also have decimals. And decimals, well, they are a little bit different when dividing with decimals. So when we divide with decimals, we've got to complete this sentence. So if you need to pause for a moment to write down this sentence and to write down the problems, go for it. Our first thing we have here, it says 5 and 4 tenths divide by negative 9 tenths. Or, as some of you, you like to say, 5.4 divide by negative 0.9. To divide with decimals, I just divide. Okay? I divide. However, Decimals need to be moved first. Okay. 
So just like the little king in Madagascar of all the lemurs, he's going to move it, move it. Well, we're going to do some moving, moving. We are going to put our problem in the box. Remember, this one always goes inside. And this one always goes outside. And I'm going to then write five and four tenths. And out here, nine tenths. And we don't like having a decimal outside the box or inside the number, so we're going to move it to its end. And then, got to keep it fair. What you do to one, you do to the other. Because remember, these could be just like fractions and stack. What you do to the bottom, you do to the top. And so, we're going to move it, we're going to move it, and we're going to move it. So, just like the little king, we're going to move it, move it, move it. All right? Kind of remember that. And I know that sounds a little silly, but hey, that's what works. We then have, oh, wow, 54 divided by 9. You all know that one is 6. And then, hey, we had a positive divided by a negative, so it's going to be negative 6. Yeah, I know there's a decimal there. That's okay. Remember, decimals at the end of an integer or a whole number, they don't mean much. If you wanted to drop it off, you could at that point, but you need it in case you had to go further. All right? So we need to move the decimals first. We good? All right. We are going to then try these three problems. When looking at these three problems, we are going to draw our box. I'm going to put my first number in the box. I'm going to put my second number outside the box. And it doesn't have a decimal. Hmm, that's okay. I'm just going to take my decimal and move it straight up. I have to do one little tiny move it, but not a bunch of move it, move it, move it. Got it? Okay. So now it's plain old ordinary. Just ignore the decimal and divide just like you did in fourth grade. So, how many sixes fit into eight? That would be one. One six is worth six. I take away those sixes that fit into the eight and I have two left over. I still need to divide, but two isn't big enough. So, I bring down the four to make it big enough to divide. I have 24. Hey, how many sixes are in 24? Well, we know from our times tables, that's four. Four times six is 24. I have no remainders. If I did, I'd have to put some zeros there so I could keep making my numbers bigger. And I then look here and I say, I have a negative and a positive. They're different signs, so I get a negative result. Pretty simple, right? You'll notice that our next two problems, they both have decimals in both numbers. So when we do this one, I'm going to draw my box. I'm going to put my first number inside the box. My second number outside the box. I don't want a decimal in the number. I want it at the end. So I'm going to move it one number. I got to do the same over there. Got to keep it fair. So I can only move it once. I can't go move it and then go move it, move it. That doesn't make sense. That's a bad dance move. So it's everybody goes move it and then move it. And then we move it up. So I'm just going to move it one spot. Then I'm going to move it up. After that, I can ignore it. I can just do my division. Makes it a little easier that way. So now, when I divide, 9, uh, we're not going to divide it into 0, but we know that 0 divided by 9 would be 0. Now, if you want to put a little 0 there, that's okay. But notice we still have another number in front of our decimal, 
and we're going to divide there. But hey, 9 doesn't fit into 6 either. But because it's in front of the decimal, we are going to put a 0. 0 9's fit into 6. Then we look at this number 63 because, hey, its decimal's gone. Its decimal bounced up there. So 63, yep, 9 fits into there. In fact, 7 of them fit in, which are 63 with no remainder. And so we get 7 tenths. We have a positive divided by a negative. Different signs make it negative. Not too bad. Our last one, well, look at that. Hmm, they're going to work out pretty easy and nice. We're going to write our problem. My first number, 15 hundredths, fits in the box. Four hundredths fits outside the box. And, hey, we get to really do a lot of moving on here because i got to get it from over here to there. So I'm going to have to move it, move it. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move it, move it, and then move it up. All right, so this one was move it, move it, move it, move it, move it. Okay, I know. Channeling the king. We now get to divide. Well, I can pretty much ignore this zero. I know it won't fit into one. I'm literally dividing 15 by 4. Well, 4 fits into 15, not perfectly, but it does fit. It fits in there three times. Three fours, they're only worth 12. And I have a remainder of three. Now, if I was working with fractions, yay, great, I could just write 3 over 4. So I would have 3 and 3 fourths, but I'm not doing fractions. I'm doing decimals. Problem is, is I don't have something to bring down. I literally have nothing over there. But we know that 0 represents nothing. So I can stick a 0 on here because it won't change the value of my number. I put zeros on the end of this number, nothing changes. It's still the same. I'm now going to drop that zero down. And hey, now I've got 30. I can do something about that. When I divide, well, 4 fits into 30, just not perfectly. But 4 fits in there 7 times. 7 fours are 28. And it's going to leave me with a remainder 2. No, I can't put remainder 2 and I can't put 2 fourths because it's part of a whole. So I really can't do that. I now need to put on another 0 because really doesn't change it. There's a whole lot of nothing out there. A whole lot, an infinite amount of nothing going on behind it. That's why we can add on all those zeros. But now, instead of 2, I have 20. And 4 fits into 20 five times perfectly, and I end up with no remainder. And so I have 3.75, and because both of my numbers are the same sign, it's a positive. Now watch it, because sometimes you might see these problems instead of written like the fourth grade divide, you could see them written as this, a numerator and a denominator. You could see that. Remember, this moving it is just like what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. All right, what I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So that's one of the other reasons. Everything has to be kept fair. And there you have it, a real brief little lesson on dividing rationals. Make sure that you read through the lesson notes and that you take notes. Bye-bye for now.